G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. We're gonna be very relaxed right now because I just got out of the shower. <laughs> so this is, this is my pre-bedtime look. I wanted to chat to you in a much more calm state for one of these last five years videos because I do get very calm going through everything and very nostalgic and retrospective and retrospective, introspective, whatever. Um, and I just wanted to read to you from that point today. So from that place, I've got March 21st, which is the first uh, piece, first page spread you're going to see finished up in this video. I've got a whole bunch of pages that I've been working on that you'll kind of see come together. I'm going to be up in the little corner for the whole video, just reading to you from this page and kind of explaining the last five years that I've had March 21st and what I did and how we came to today? <laughs> well, this year's. Um, and yeah, we'll just go from there. And I, I think I did this one time before with the last five years. I think I did uh, lots of me finishing up my five-year journal because it is coming close towards the end of the year and I need to get everything done. So I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more of this really soon. March 21st, 2019, reads, sent off my I-751 application. There's also a little bit on the other side that says, Praying the visas will approve, no, lies, praying the USCIS will approve my I-751 petition to lift conditions of permanent residence without an interview, then I will have my 10-year green card, yay. So, for those of you who don't know, I live in the States, I live in sunny Southern California, I'm originally from Australia, but I came here on a fiancé visa to marry my husband, we've been married seven years now. We got married, very 90-day fiancé style. It's exactly how that happens. You have three months to get married when you come over here on that visa. And as soon as you do, you then change your status from the fiancé status that you entered the country. I think that's K-1. And then you apply for a work authorization and change your status to permanent resident. But it, the first step of being a permanent resident is conditional for two years. And the condition is that you stay married for those two years. Um... And then after that, you can apply to lift the restrictions that are on that. Uh, there are some kind of other circumstances that might happen where people don't need those conditions to, you know, continue having their green card. Um, but for me, I was just going the very general route of being married, staying married. So I <laughs> stayed married for two years, then sent off this application. And basically this one is saying, uh, I'd like my 10 year green card, but I don't want any of the restrictions on it, which is basically saying, like, I can sponsor myself to be here. So my conditions were that I would still have to stay married, but for the next 10 years, I actually don't have to. I could, I mean, I don't plan to, but I could leave my husband and continue to have my green card by myself. So that's all that really is. Uh, and that's how I got my 10-year green card. That's kind of the process that happens when you come to the States that way. So it was a long process. I have to say, uh, I did get that granted almost a complete year later after I sent off that application. Sometimes people have to go in for interviews to have the, so that they can, you know, really cross-reference everything. And some people get them. I don't know if it's something they choose or if it's just random, but I actually got to do it without an interview. So it just got approved. And then I got my 10 year green card, I think maybe a week into lockdown for COVID, which was very interesting because I felt like I'd like, I'm, yeah, I've got my 10 year green card. I can go. Cause even when I was traveling for the first two years with that, uh, conditional green card, that permanent resident card, I still felt like there was a lot of questions when I would come back to the States. Like I'd go home and then I'd come back. Um, and especially because I wouldn't go with Steve, they'd be like, why didn't your husband go? You're only here because of your husband. Are you, what is this? It kind of looks a little suspicious. Um, so anyway, all of that to say, I felt like, yeah, I've got it. I can travel, but I couldn't travel because it was 2020 and no one was really traveling. So let's go to 2020. Speaking of, I joined in on the Happy Place online. I put in quotes for some reason. Uh, art party and made a Tinkerbell spread in my journal, <laughs> missing a prime opportunity to caption it on Instagram as Tink and Paint, which is a stupid reference to Ink and Paint, which is the department at Disney where they do all the inking and painting. Anyway, haha, apparently I found that very funny. I don't find it funny all these years later. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> oh, people are really starting to understand the stay in place orders and we're all in for a turbulent couple of weeks. Woof, so weird reading that back. Definitely was longer than a couple of weeks. 
Steve is getting better with his anxieties and helping with more JLB creative duties. We'll get through it. Get through it, we did. Um, I think in the beginning, I think everyone had a lot of anxieties about it. I was a little bit more calm than I think Steve was, but Steve had a lot of things to worry about. And um, yeah, we're just different people like that. I think eventually I started taking on a bit more of that <laughs> anxiety after, you know, because at first I just thought it was going to be a couple of weeks, like I wrote. Um, and I think more of Steve's anxieties was about work, like what was going to happen at Disneyland? Were they going to stay open? Were they going to stay employed? And, you know, it's been years now, so I think a lot of people look back on it and feel removed enough from it to feel okay. Um, but yeah, through that time, it was just, it was a lot of unknown. And I tried to journal that and I tried to capture a lot of those feelings because I wanted to be able to look back on it and be very, very grateful <laughs> that that was in the past <laughs> and that it's not my present. So I am um, honestly reading back a lot of this stuff right now is a great place for me to read it because I'm very happy and I'm very like right where I want to be. So looking back on a lot of the more difficult things in my journal, they it seems really minuscule. It seems really small in comparison to the contentment that I feel right now. So I, I really like that. Um, I don't know who wouldn't like that. It's just a really nice thing to feel. So that was 2020. I have a little drawing of the Tinkerbell over there. We have 2021 was a Sunday. Had a full day off today. Filmed a little of my collage club work, but I kept everything relaxed for myself. Steve had a shoot all day again today, so it was pretty low-key at home with the cats, and I ordered Bay Pokey. I'm feeling a lot of vitality one week into my new life changes. It's hard, but I can feel my dream to perform calling me back again, and I need to be ready for it. Yes. Okay, so that's something <laughs> that even though that's pretty optimistic, it's a little sad to say didn't end up happening until much, much later at the end of 2022. So that was about a year and a half after that journal entry. I think a lot of the journal entries kind of reflect that same sentiment. I had for all the years I've not been dancing, I've had a really strong desire to return to it. So I think that's why I'm so happy right now. Obviously, um, I'm back at it. So I feel all of that. I mean, I, sometimes I say it's like relief. Like I just, I feel relieved that I'm, I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing again. Um, but yeah, I'd started my, my life changes. I had gained a ton of weight. I don't know how many people know this, but I'm sure if you ever... <laughs> watch any of my videos from that time, I did gain a lot of weight. I think as high as I got maybe was 310 to 20 pounds, somewhere around there. Once you're over the 300s, it's up there, right? So um, I'm 5'11", so I'm not short, but I didn't carry that weight in a way that made it look like I wasn't that weight. I definitely looked like I was over 300 pounds. I have a lot of stretch marks now, which is great. A nice little, uh, you know, a reminder of where I've been and how far I've come, because obviously I've shed some of that weight. But I did intentionally try to make those changes, and I, I really did have to think of them as life changes because I couldn't think of them as diets anymore. They just weren't working that way. I think especially after 2020 and just the way I'd been feeling it. At that point, we were like five, yeah, like five, six years in to not, to not dancing, and I was just very depressed about it. So I felt like you know, maybe it was self-sabotage a little bit, or maybe I just, I, you know, the times where I felt very pessimistic, the times where I didn't feel as hopeful, I would find myself giving up and just thinking, I'm just going to eat. I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'm going to do whatever I want. I don't really care because obviously I'm not dancing. So why does it matter? I can just be fat. <laughs> I can just, no one's going to care. Um, but you know, and I think I had, I had also not cared a bit as well. And, uh, and I don't really know where that came from because I, I do care. I do really care that I feel good and that I feel healthy. Um, I don't care to feel thin. Obviously, that's something that I work towards is shedding weight just so I can be more marketable with the, you know, the dancing. But I don't need to feel thin to feel good. Like I felt I've been bigger and I felt fine and had a good self-confidence about, you know, me, myself. But the actual feeling of, you know, struggling to do things I hadn't struggled to do before or not fitting into clothes that I owned that I really love like those were things I really wanted to address and just the general health of it all as I started to get older and I turned 30 I was like you know things don't get easier from this point so I shouldn't probably make them any harder than they need to be and that was I guess around the time where I started to to put some of that into action and it included 
small changes over a long period of time. I have really taken it super duper slow, and I think it's the only thing that's been long-term beneficial for me. I knew I wanted to do it, I knew I'd be frustrated, I knew I'd feel impatient, but at the same time, you know, I'm not even at the end of my journey right now, but that's that's the thing. I'm not even thinking of this as like, you know, next December, I'll give you a weigh-in picture and we'll have made our goal. I think I just wanted to ha live a life that reflected the kind of health that I was interested in. So being active, being outside, like actually getting sunlight, not being stuck inside all day, um, taking walks, going to Zumba. I started going to Zumba very frequently. Uh, you know, even like down to personal hygiene and grooming, like just things that I wanted to change about my routine so that I felt, you know, put together in a sense. Like there was a lot of times where I would just, <laughs> ironic that I'm wearing my pajamas right now to <laughs> chat to you. There's a lot of times I just spent my whole day in pajamas. I have been out all day. I've been working, but you know, I'm comfy now and I, I wanted to kind of be comfy when I was comfy and not working, but be prepared and be together and work when I needed to work. That's a struggle I've had being self-employed is, you know, you don't have to get ready if you don't want to. You can take your lunch break whenever you want. So sometimes I would become really relaxed with my routine and I don't think it would put me in the best headspace for, you know, work. It just wasn't conducive to being productive or to feeling good about it. So those were some of the changes I think I was going through at that point. I know I was going through at that point. Bay pokey is actually not that unhealthy, so ordering that was completely fine. <laughs> and I do spend most of my days with the cats uh, when we're all at home, just having a day relaxing. A pokey, I love. Poke bowls are like deconstructed sushi in my mind. I actually, it's probably just easier to call them rice bowls with, you know, toppings, kind of sushi-esque toppings. I usually get I used to get brown rice, now I just get the white rice. Uh, white rice base, large. You get four scoops of the protein. I get two salmon, one shrimp, one egg, the tamago egg. I get the onions and cucumbers, even though my breath stinks after that. Spicy mayo, not a lot, enough to coat the proteins. And then I get the edamame, the seaweed salad, the imitation crab, love that. Uh, I don't ever get the avocado. Steve usually gets the avocado. I just can't be bothered paying extra for avocado. <laughs> well, usually we have one at home, I might put it on. Uh, but the thing that I, I love getting with it is pineapple. I always get pineapple on my pokey. I just love it. Uh, then I get the furikake, the little seasonings, crispy, crunchy onions and garlic. And it is very, very delicious, but obviously the worst for your breath. So having a like bay pokey day that's just the name of the place it's a pokey bowl having a pokey bowl for me it sounds like pokey bowl like pokemon uh is a like that's it for the day don't even talk to anyone no matter how many times i clean my teeth it just like <laughs> i can swallow half a bottle of listerine it just doesn't get any better than that i feel like when i have that pokey bowl that one specifically it's an all-day affair i've made the mistake of having it and going to zumba before the poor ladies it was repeating on me in the back Anyway, let's move on from that. That's disgusting. Uh, 2022. <laughs> I love this. This is me a little bit angry, I guess. I love how everything's in pink, too. Productivity is not everything. I should... It's all in bold. Uh, I should not feel bad if today was not as productive as it could have been. I am allowed to do what I need to do and not feel guilty for not doing all I could have done. Not learning this, just a reminder to myself today. Gilded Age finale was good. <laughs> I've just started watching the Gilded Age again. I don't remember there being that much of a break. To me, it only stopped like a few months ago, but there's no way that was the last time I saw it was in March 2022. I feel like that's something weird has happened there in space and time. Yeah, I put all of that there just as a reminder to myself. Uh, <laughs> I can be very hard on myself when it comes to work. You know, I just talked about being prepared for it and, you know, being productive and doing all those things. There are just some days where, like, I just can't hack it. Like, I just can't be bothered doing half of it. I just need a break. Uh, and it usually came down to the fact that I would never schedule myself days off or I never worked to a schedule that would allow for time off. And so I think what was happening was naturally I'd burn myself into a point where I, I just needed a day off and I would feel guilty that I was being not productive, but reality was just like, I need to have a day off and then I'll be plenty productive next week. Cause 
my, my pace would really slow down. Like when I would get really exhausted after weeks and weeks of just working nonstop, I would, I would just slow down to a point where if I took one day off, I could have done all the three days of work I've just been doing at a super slow pace. So I kept telling myself if I work every day, I should have the results of working every day. But realistically, I was working at such a reduced capacity, I should have just taken the day off. So my mindset about that has changed. And I, if I don't feel so productive at this point, I don't think it's a reflection of my work ethic as much. I mean, I know there are times where that is true. <laughs> there are times where I'm just lazy or I'm just, I'm very aware of that though. These other things I think I wasn't particularly aware of. And I just think it, it just had everything to do with poor management, like poor me management. So I, I now just usually take the day off if I feel like I'm getting to that point and then I'm plenty productive you know, the rest of the week. But yeah, I, I, sh I needed to tell myself that you need to do that. Do what you need to do to be what you need to be. Because uh, no one else tells you that. You just kind of get to the point and you're like, oh, how did I not know that? But it's not like I schedule a meeting with myself to say, hey, how are you going today? Like, what can we help you with, James? No one does any of that. You just have to do it yourself. And it's intuitive to a point, I think. I think a lot of it I felt intuitive about, but there are some things about myself that just need management that I don't really know until I know I need to fix them. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting. That's one of the interesting parts of being self-employed is just like your evaluation of yourself as a worker. And then like, cause you can always tell yourself, yeah, well, I, I, I was going through this this day and it's like, yeah, yeah, I know that. I, <laughs> why am I doing myself? the reasoning that I already knew. So I, I needed the, uh, I needed the solution in place. So my solution is take the day off, you idiot. <laughs> Just take it off. <laughs> You'll be plenty of productive the next day. Because it is important. If I do show up to work and I am ready to do it, I want to be productive. I don't think there's any point in not being. Um, and then I think if I procrastinate, it has to be a choice. I can't accidentally be procrastinating all the time. So I, if I know I'm doing it, I choose to do it. I let it be. No guilt, no shame. Just keep going. Uh, and then 2023, we went to San Bernardino to see Caleb and Jacqueline. Those are our friends. Uh, we went to lunch at BJ's and we got to meet baby Nora. She really took to Steve and is a dead ringer for Caleb, just like a mini version. I'm feeling a touch depressed, so Steve got me back home so I could go to Zumba. <laughs> it's the closest thing I've got to dancing and it cheered me up a bit. Holiday soon, just keep swimming. Uh, so yeah, we went to go and see friends, uh, not too far away, went and had lunch and met their new baby. She's talking now, so yeah, that seems like a long time ago. Uh, not much to say about that. You go meet friends, you meet their babies. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. I actually remember that day. I think it was raining. Um, I wasn't, I don't I hope Caleb and Jacqueline are watching this. They know it all already anyway. I... I didn't even feel like going. I didn't feel like going. I was depressed. I wasn't even a touch depressed. I think I was being a little, uh, I think I was being a little soft on myself in that journal entry. Cause ironically, I feel like, you know, what if someone reads it and here I am literally reading it out loud to you. So I'll just tell you sometimes I would downplay how, how I felt just in case someone did read it. Um, it's not often, uh, but usually <laughs> if it was really bad, uh, it's sometimes it's just a little bit downplayed in there. Other times it's not. Other times I think I over some of it. So, you know, you just never know. <laughs> but I do remember that day and I just felt like I didn't want to see anyone. I didn't want to talk to anyone. It felt like the biggest effort in the world to go and do it. And it's so sad because it's your friends. But if you've ever felt depressed for any reason, you know that it, it could be the person you love the most in the entire world. And it's really not going to change much about that feeling. You just feel off and like you just don't want to. So, um... Yeah, it was just, it was about dancing. I didn't start dancing until late last year, 2022. It had been seven years up until that point. I was so happy to go back, but I found myself uh, just working for a short period over Christmas and the new year, and then uh, not having anything to do for most of 2022, like all through the summer, all through the spring and summer, really. Uh, it wasn't until Halloween that I started dancing again. So I did really struggle with that a ton, actually. Um, and I don't think I kept a lot of that secret. I think I have been talking to you about it this year and being a little bit more forthright with that information. I don't try to do it too often because I feel like it comes across as like, like trauma dumping or complaining or whinging. 
um, and I had a lot to be thankful for, obviously, but it was just a really real thing that I was struggling with, um, and it had a lot to do with the fact that obviously I wanted to be dancing, but also the social aspect of what dancing again had brought me, you know, I was suddenly around people again, I wasn't working by myself all the time, I was also in such a structured routine with those days that I had to show up to work that I found myself really focused and doing a good job of, like, you know, putting everything together, you know, I wasn't just kind of floating through everything, I felt like I had stuff to organize, I felt like I had a life to, you know, get control of, and I felt, you know, a bit of a sense of uh, importance in all of that, I felt like there was something for me to do that made me feel like I was kind of in charge of building this lifestyle that I was going to create for myself. So I, I really, really struggled when all of that went away, mostly uh, the social aspect of it. I missed being around people. I missed having lunch with my friends at work. And I missed just being in an atmosphere where there was a lot of people just to listen to. Like, they're, they're just chatting. They're having conversations about nothing. And I really liked all of it. Um, you know, I keep myself very entertained with YouTube all day. I watch lots of very long form content videos on YouTube. So I, I feel like I've got my little online community and that's why I value so much the online community that I participate in because I know that for some of you, I fit into that part of your day as well. And so I don't underestimate how how important it can be to kind of show up and, and be consistent with videos if, if you've got a routine going and, you know, I'm a part of it for your, you know, your Friday or your Saturday or whatever. But yeah, that real human interaction, just even being in a space where lots of people are not just sitting in a room all day long was very important to me and I was really struggling. And I think also I was struggling because I would still take Steve to work. And so I was taking Steve to that place every day that I didn't have a need. I didn't have a reason to be there. Like I, I could go and visit. I could go and entertain, like enjoy myself being entertained at the park but I didn't have a schedule to, you know, I didn't have any work commitments to fulfill. So it, it was almost like a big tease every day trying to drop him off. And, you know, it was a little hard for him too. I'm not going to lie. Uh, if he kept a journal, I'm sure it'd be a lot more colorful with <laughs> his feelings about it. He did a really good job being very supportive throughout the year, but I don't think that's something he wants to revisit. And this is why I feel good sharing this with you now, because I'm kind of like, overly blessed with opportunities at this point. Um, I actually have too many opportunities that I can't accept everything. <laughs> so that is interesting, uh, a place to be. And I've, I've always wanted to be back in that place. I remember that place from when I was younger and it feels really good to be there. It's like the best kind of a problem to have. And 2024 looks like it's set to be kind of full of all of the experiences I was kind of hoping I would have this year with dance, it's already kind of locked and loaded for 2024. So yeah, I can just keep swimming, I guess, or just take a break now that it's all happened. I, I was always optimistic. I, I hope it never seemed like I'd ever kind of given up on it. I've always believed it would work out, but I'm just super impatient. And then I was really struggling to deal with my feelings about it because the more upset I got, the more I almost couldn't believe that I hadn't figured it out. Like, I spent seven years upset about it and I just felt like, you know, great, it's gone. Like, I don't have to deal with that anymore. And I think, you know, sometimes I remind myself that things that hurt, like, and feel bad, no matter what they are, like how big or small the problem might be, like, that it's an okay response to just be upset about it and to feel those things through. And I don't need to try and figure out how to not feel sad because feeling sad is a part of life and we feel that. And it is ultimately uh, because I was so hopeful that I felt so sad. So in essence, like there is a good reason for why I'm feeling sad. It's not stupid. It's not out of nowhere. Um, and so it's okay just to feel through it and then move forward when you can. I have always been very good at, <laughs> I can pat myself on the back here. I've always been very good at looking for a silver lining or at least finding things I can be grateful for and being able to experience joy whilst also experiencing that depression. Like I never felt like joy was inaccessible to me, inaccessible. Um, I never felt like I couldn't be happy even when I was depressed. So that 
has always been an interesting mix. Like I, I could identify my issues. I knew I should feel sad. I spent the time to feel sad. But then as soon as I got an opportunity to feel happy again, I was running off with that. And I think that's where art journaling came in and filled so much of that experience. It was like I did find so much joy and excitement and happiness and fulfillment in doing all of my art journaling endeavors and everything that I do within my business that, you know, I would let that fill up my bucket where it could, but I also didn't expect it to transfer over and replace what I got from dancing. I knew I could still be sad about that and still pursue my dreams there whilst also letting this be fulfilling and be nourishing and be exciting. Um, and, you know, it's a really weird thing that you live with when you're an adult. I feel like we don't have those feelings when we're younger. And to be fair, I feel like I've had a very extended youth. I think I don't really feel like an adult until I came here and married Steve. <laughs> I knew I was doing some adult things. But like, I didn't have rent until I came and lived here. Like, I was on cruise ships where I lived in Japan and we didn't have rent there. And, uh, like, in that contract, we didn't have to pay any rent. So I felt like when I would visit home, it was only for, like, a month. So I would just kind of stay at home with my family and then leave again. Yeah, I really just didn't have any kind of adult, adult responsibilities until I was 25, 26, even. Let's say 26. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I feel like I've had, like, a really extended, you know, very fantastical, very naive, youthful experience of life until about 26. Now I'm just focused on the fact that it says 26 minutes up there. That is really all I've got to share with you. I don't need to get too philosophical because I'm sure I'll do another five years with you in this journal and we can talk about all of the memories that those uh, passages inspire for me to talk about. But I hope you enjoyed looking back at March 21st from 2019 to 2023. I am going to turn this off, get it into my iMovie, send it all out to you and then go to sleep. Hope you've had a nice night with me, or day, evening, wherever you are, morning. Hopefully it was comfy and cozy. <laughs> I'm feeling so, almost like relieved actually, because this was a little bit stressful to read because I I did go back into that place for a second. But I'm very relieved. I'm in such a good place right now. So I'm just going to hold on to that and let that be sweet dreams for me tonight. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you again soon.